I dream of a place where I can simply raise my native son to be human, to love music, to make art, to fall in love, to make things he loves with his hands. I want to tell our daughters that I know the source of our internal bruises. I know that a brown girl's pain passes down quietly through our families like hand-me-down heels that don't fit into your girlhood. Okay, you go. All right. Uh, it's a battle. I'm just kidding. Go. Okay. <laughs> I know my mom and dad gave me that for a reason, but I just don't know why. When I'm, I'm trying, trying to find out, my brain hurts from the pressure. On a throne and having a butler doesn't mean you're a king. If you're a king, you help people. You pick people up when they're falling down. And that's the king, king I, I want, want to be. be. You were how old when you were that? About? Nine. Uh, Nine. I'm Jessica Kiermore, and I'm a poet, I'm an interdisciplinary artist, I'm a curator, um, and a musician. My name is King Moore, I'm 14 years old, and I go to Detroit School of the Arts. So, I, I write poems, and I make music with poetry. I got into poetry when I was around 7 years old. Uh, that's when my mom noticed that I was writing, and that's where it started. Poetry kind of came to me, I was writing much like my son when I was around seven or eight. Uh, not poems, I was writing short stories. I was a curious child, so I wanted to know about everybody. I wanted to write about my neighbors. Poetry can be a way to escape or just a way to write how you feel. My mother was an avid reader, and so she gave me books all the time. And so she gave me uh, Alice Walker, Lorraine Hansberry, this book, uh, To Be Young, Gifted and Black. So I would come home from school and I would have books waiting on me, so my mother knew that I was a, uh, I'm a speed reader, I read really fast. Especially when I was younger, I could read books just really fast, and my mother is the same way. And she read a lot of memoir and history, historical, not a lot of fiction books in my house. And so I think I fell in love with um, history and politics and people's stories. It's the way that um, I see the world, it's the way that I pay my mortgage, it's the way that I feed my family, it's, um, it's freedom. You know, you, you take this thing called language that's pushed on you and you twist and turn it and transform it into something that can um, be really beautiful. And um, yeah, it's, I think it's like poetry is freedom, you know, and, it, and it's truth. Um, poetry heals people. Poems have healed me. Other people's poems um, have helped me get through hard moments. And, and uh, yeah, we need poets, man, especially now with everything that's happening in the world. I couldn't imagine not having poems. I'm really moved and inspired by my community and my people, uh, our story, our resilience. I don't have a process. I kind of just write how I feel down or a subject that I want to talk about. But I like, I write stories about strangers. Um, a conversation can inspire me. Um, but I'm also an artist that um, has doesn't step away from politics. So if something's happening in the world. Um, so I've written my new book, We Want Our Bodies Back. This book is for Sandra Bland. Um, so this book is, deals with police brutality. It deals with um, uh, black women's um, bodies being subjugated. It deals with lots of um, things that happen to girls and, and women. And, um, and, and so, you know, I take on hard subject matters that other writers may not, you know, but I write fun poems too. <laughs> um, but my work is, um, has purpose behind it. So I don't just write, make art for art's sake. I have other things I do for art's sake. I, I do collage on canvas. I, you know, play with uh, things like that just for fun. But my poems, I take my poetry pretty serious and I use it as a, a mechanism um, to be a part of the, the movement for change in this country. And I think that's what artists are supposed to do. It makes me feel calm and like, Soothe. When I just write a poem, I, I feel good. I feel good when I've written a poem that I feel good about. Sometimes I write a poem and I'm sad, you know, depending on the poem. Um, but when I finish a poem and I know I've written a good poem, I'm very happy. I haven't written one in a while. It's like I haven't, I've been writing other things. I've been writing film scripts and writing songs um, as of recent. Um, but I got a, I got a, a couple books I got to finish. Um, and so I feel good when I get to the finish line. And when I know, okay, this is a goodie. I know that I, I you know, I, I call a couple of my poetry 
uh, comrades and I read it to them. I'm like, what you think? He's like, it's a good one. So, you know, um, but I, when I'm not writing, I'm usually not happy. I have to write to be happy. I've never made a poem that I didn't like. Yeah, a lot of poems. I write a lot of poems that I don't like. None of it's bad. It's just everything isn't for a book. Everything isn't meant to become a song. So yeah, there's lots of poems that I've written. I'm like, ah, die. You know, and people usually like my work more than I do, to be honest. I'm, I'm a, probably my hardest critic. I think my favorite poem is probably Aliens, because it's where I talk about a heavy subject for the first time, and I was young still. My favorite, I have favorite poems from different time periods, so I don't have like one favorite poem. Um, because you're always growing as a writer, and so my poems that I wrote, like in my first book, The Words Don't Fit In My Mouth, you know, my favorite poem in this book is like Black Statue of Liberty. That's the one I did on the Apollo. But it's not my favorite poem anymore. It's some people, other people's favorite poems, right? They, they hold on to that one poem and they still love this poem that I wrote when I was like 19 or 20 years old. My favorite poem out of this book is probably Walking Up 158th Street. And I actually turned it into a song on my album, Black Tea. Twin boys, Mexican, Latino, Indian, African, any child in America, wearing Yankees jackets, playing tag, double murder, child stealers, watch them running without worry, laughing with the sunset. So, you know, it depends. And then we want our bodies back because it's my current book and for Sandra Bland. And, um, but it's, it's, I don't know, it's one of my favorite books of this book, but it's not... I like other ones, you know, I have love poems in this book. Once I've written them though, I'm over them <laughs> and I'm always moving on to the next one. Have you ever gotten emotional over another artist's poem? Yes, absolutely. I've never gotten emotional over another artist's poem, but I've definitely heard some emotional poems before. Uh, Nikki Feeney is one of my favorite po contemporary poets. She was reading from her book it was years ago at Brooklyn Moon Cafe. I was just in my 20s and I saw her read from her book, uh, Rice. Asha Bandeli, who I published, actually, I published her book, um, yes, uh, The Subtle Art of Breathing. She's amazing. She made me cry. Um, Ursula Rucker has made me cry. Uh, Sonia Sanchez has made me cry. And Dezaki's made me cry. Poems, poets who are good make me cry. I still hear my Have you made and which one is your favorite?